Men and uh, who are here for the ceremony and the awarding of degrees, if you could remove your hat until you're instructed to put it back on. Let me take just a moment before I pray and say to you, I am not uh, Dr. Michael Reese, and that's pretty obvious. I'm not as good looking as he is. Uh, Michael could not be with us tonight, so I have the privilege to do the invocation. My name's Harry Reeder and I get the privilege to serve this congregation here at Briarwood as senior pastor. Would you join me in prayer? God, we thank you so much for tonight. This is a time where we give you worship and praise. We have assembled for a graduation recognition, a celebration, but most of all, adoration to you because we would not do what we do we could not do what we do for you, nor could we prepare to serve you without what you do first for us in Jesus Christ, and then in us by the Holy Spirit, and then through us for the glory of the Father. So triune God, we have come to praise you tonight. We ask that you would encourage all of these graduates as their work is affirmed and their degrees are awarded. We pray that you would also receive our praise for what you have done, not only in them to bring them to this point, but our anticipation of what you're going to do through them from this day forward. And then I would ask that you would bless their family and their friends as they are encouraged. Many of them have uh, encouraged and prayed and given and sacrificed to help them. So would you give them a sense of accomplishment in Christ tonight as well? So God, all blessings are from you. Therefore, we bring you praise, Father, tonight in and through Jesus Christ and by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. My friends, my name is Ike Reeder, the, uh, and I have the honor of uh, serving as Dr. Reeder's son, but also as the president of Birmingham Theological Seminary. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, have the chance to minister together in this capacity. Uh, but I am the president of the seminary, and it is with great excitement that I welcome all of you this evening to our commencement exercises for 2021. This past year and a half have been uh, particularly arduous and difficult for many people for many different reasons. Uh, but tonight we have a wonderful opportunity. We have an opportunity, one that we really do have every day, but tonight a special opportunity to celebrate God's faithfulness at the end of a journey. But it is not only the end of a journey that we get to celebrate, we also have the opportunity to celebrate beginnings. And for so many of our students, it is but one signpost on a long journey of ministry that they have been involved in throughout their career as a student at BTS and will continue to be involved in. But as the poet says, what we call the beginning is often an end. And to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. So while tonight may be an end, it is not the end. It is a new beginning on the way to the end, when our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcomes us, his faithful servants, with his open arms. So tonight we celebrate, but we also anticipate. After the pictures, after the hugs, uh, safely with your families, of course, uh, and all the fun that we will have, 
we will roll up our sleeves tomorrow and we will ask my favorite question, what's next? So to all of our graduates tonight, I say, well done, and what's next? To the faculty and the board of directors that are here, thank you for attending tonight and for your unflagging service to Birmingham Theological Seminary and to the students who have chosen to make BTS their home. To the families and friends that are here to celebrate with our graduates tonight, thank you, as my father has already mentioned, for your support and the patience of these uh, folks that are graduating tonight. Thank you for the long hours, for your patience, uh, for morning and evening classes, and for the encouraging words and the hugs and the sharing of burdens that have enabled the men and women sitting here to finish their degrees. And, uh, and on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you for attending tonight's ceremony and celebration. As I said, a celebration of years of hard work and discipline and labor, but labor for the highest cause, to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you for being a witness to this wonderful evening. Come, our glorious King. Stand with me as Dr. Haynes leads us in our hymn.
may be seated. A reading from God's holy word, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to also all who have loved his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good evening. My name is Brian Phillips, and I have been a student at BTS since February of 2001. <laughs> so I have successfully crammed a three-year degree into 20 years. And I'm not even from Alabama, so that's an impressive feat. Uh, there are so many reasons that I'm thankful for BTS, and I wanted just to share three of them with you tonight. If I've learned one thing at BTS, it's that when you're not quite sure what to say, if you can just break it up into three different points, then you're on the right track. So um, I've got three things for you tonight, but before I jump into that, I just wanna say thank you to my wife. Uh, Jennifer is the really pretty one out there in the middle, and without her, there's no way I would be graduating tonight. She put up with hundreds of hours of assignments and reading and the night light on, and I'm so thankful for you, Jennifer and I love you, so, and you look great. All right, so three reasons that I'm thankful for BTS. Um, they have made theological education possible, practical, and pleasurable. So, theological education, practical, I'm sorry, possible. So when I was finishing college, I was, had an internship in Morocco and it was while I was on a train trying to share with some Muslim men that it dawned on me I wasn't quite ready to take on the Middle East. And some additional development and training would probably be a good idea. And so as I graduated, I really thought about just going straight into ministry, um, sorry, straight into seminary full time. But as I was talking to some people, they really helped me understand that, you know, I didn't have to necessarily choose between ministry or um, or being developed and they pointed me towards BTS and campus outreach and the first class that I took was in the conference room right over there uh, we listened to CDs of Pastor Reader uh, talking about the Christian workers personal life and I just remember thinking this is incredible a that I'm getting paid to get this kind of training but B that I'm able to go to a seminary that is as accommodating as BTS was. And that has been true for 20 years, whether it was taking live classes or in small groups or one-on-one -on -one classes with professors or taking classes, you know, when we were living on the other side of the world, um, BTS has been incredibly accommodating and flexible. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm also just thankful for the work that has gone into keeping the cost affordable. Uh, we've raised support for 20 years. And I honestly don't think I could have been able to afford um, a really expensive seminary. So I'm so thankful for the hard work that goes in to keeping BTS um, at a reasonable cost. Um, so BTS has made theological education possible. 
They've also made theological education practical. And if I'm honest, a lot of the things that I learned, learned 20 years ago, I don't know if I could regurgitate tonight. Um, but what I'm so thankful for is the ways that I have been encouraged to apply that information all the way through. And here's just a few examples for you. Uh, there was a systematic theology class that I took, and I had to write a paper on how eschatology impacts evangelism to college students. And I just remember that having immediate application in so many conversations. Um, there was a class I took titled Life and Work on the Mission Field, and I had to write a 20-page paper on how to transition a family from America to overseas. And that paper was invaluable when that's exactly what we were doing. Um, Reverend Cheely, when he was here, he made me plan an entire missions conference for a church. And there was a year in Brisbane when our church's missions conference looked remarkably similar <laughs> to that paper. Um, I took an advanced counseling class and the presentation that I gave on dementia has been incredibly helpful as I've helped my dad navigate some tough, some tough years. And so I'm so grateful that it wasn't just information transfer, but there was some practical applications to the things that I was learning. Um, so they've made theological education practical. And then lastly, BTS has made theological education pleasurable. I needed a P, so. Um, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I loved every single class or every single assignment, but I did love the interactions with the fellow students and I loved the passion from the professors. Uh, whether it was Frank Barker teaching Old Testament with notes that had turned yellow over the years, or Cooper Pinson teaching using the latest technology and you know all the art that he pulled into the class, um, it was just so evident that, that the professors were passionate about what they were teaching, and that, that's what made it pleasurable. So when people ask me where they should go to semina seminary, usually what I tell them is I honestly believe that God is more concerned with the kind of person that you're becoming than, than where you're learning. And so if you can focus on picking the place that's going to help you become more like Jesus, you're probably going to be in a pretty safe place. Um, and I could be wrong, but I really hope that over the last 20 years, I have taken steps to become a little bit more like Jesus, and BTS has been a huge part of that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. We now come to the part of our ceremony where we have the chance to have a commencement address, and it is a distinct honor this evening to have the opportunity to introduce our speaker. Not only is our speaker a graduate of BTS, uh, but he has also served faithfully for many years as the senior pastor of First Missionary Church East Boyles, and also currently is the president of the New Era Progressive Missionary Baptist State Convention of Alabama for the National Baptist Convention of America. But the Reverend Robert Alexander Jr., not only being a longtime board member, faculty member, uh, serving faithfully and teaching so many students in our systematic theology department. But one of the greatest blessings of the tenure of my last four years as president is that I now have the opportunity to call this brother in Christ a friend. He has been a blessing to me and to many of you, to our students over the years, and I am so grateful that you have the opportunity to hear from him tonight. So please take a moment to join me in welcoming Reverend Robert Alexander. Junior. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Blessed be the name of the Lord who does all things well. President Ike Reader, thank God for him and and for this privilege to stand in this place tonight. Thank him for that introduction. I'm glad my wife was here, to, is here to hear all of that. <laughs> in case she have any plans of going anywhere, she know now she don't have to go. <laughs> we just thankful uh, 
for Brother James, thankful to the pastor of this church, Dr. Rita, thankful uh, to all our board members, faculty, and staff, and to the graduates of 2021, to all the family members and friends who are here to celebrate with them. We're grateful to God again just to be here. I do have some, if not many, of my members from my church who probably is here, and one thing they're going to learn tonight about their pastor, that he can preach a short sermon. <laughs> and so, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, and I just want to read a couple of verses. And in verse number 24 says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Then verse number 26 says, But everyone who heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, not will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Father in heaven, we thank you. We pray now that you speak to us, through us, and for us, that you may be glorified and your church edified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Tonight we want to attempt to talk about the determining factor, the determining factor. Some years ago, I was summers to the jewel room in Birmingham, and by my surprise, I was selected to serve on the jury. And we were sitting on a case, first degree robbery. And as we were sitting in the courtroom and listening to all of the evidence that was being put before us so that we can make a decision of guilty or innocent. The prosecuting attorney asked uh, the defendant who was on the stand, was there anything in particular that she noticed about her assailant? And she began to describe a tattoo. She began to describe what it looked like and exactly where it was located. And then the prosecutor attorney asked the jurors to allow the, uh, the offender to remove his shirt. And his attorney object, but he was overruled. And the shirt was removed. And when the shirt came off, all of us began to ooh and to ah. Because it was that if she had drawn the tattoo herself and put it in that place. She described it to a T. And we, and we assemble in the jury room, many of us, that tattoo description, along with other uh, information, was the determining factor of us walking away with a guilty verdict. And I must say, that is what I believe that this text that we're looking at tonight, that is what it presents to us, a determining factor in our life. Matthew, in his writing of his gospel, he writes to us about the Messiahship of Jesus Christ. He recognized him through his family tree. He located him with the two central figures in the Hebrew family, and that is Abraham and David. Matthew wants to get over to the Jew that Jesus is their Messiah. And when he arrived on the scene, Jesus began preaching and teaching in chapter five of the book of Matthew, teaching and preaching of what we call the Sermon on the Mountain. 
He was giving us the principles for the kingdom, the principles of salvation, the principle of how one would know that he or she has been saved. The Jew, the religious leader, uh, they, they look at a legalistic religion. Their salvation was based on the keeping of the law or their tradition and not the true teachings of the scripture. And when Jesus arrived, he put uh, into motion the teachings of the principles of the kingdom and he shared with them on what it means to be saved. And as Jesus shared with them, as we get to the close of this sermon in chapter 7, he is now winding down his message. And he's given what we might call his conclusion. Now, after he had finished, the decision now is up to the heroes of what are they going to do with this message. Now that you have completed your studies, you have completed all of your reading and all of your writing. You are about to receive your degree. Now, what are you going to do with the information that you have received? And Jesus looks at them. He said, listen, uh, salvation is not based on what one says. It is not based on what one does. But there must be both a hearer and a doer of the word. And he says to them, therefore, and therefore, in light of everything else that he has said, therefore, whosoever heareth, notice that, whosoever heareth, then the whosoever is undefined. It is whoever will listen to what Jesus is teaching. Whosoever hears, and I like this word here, it is the word akuo, but it have a prefix on it, which is hupo akuo. And hupo means to come up under, to come up under the word and hear what the word of Jesus is saying. Jesus said, whosoever hears these that's descriptive, these sayings of mine. Notice that, these sayings of mine, which means he's particular about what they hear and who they hear. These sins are mine. He said, I would liken unto him as a wise man who built his house on a rock. Listen, tonight is the conclusion of everything that you have done, but it's the beginning of what you are about to do. And how you build your ministry from this point on, there will be a determining factor on the foundation of the structure of your ministry. And here Jesus said, whosoever do it, uh, according to my teaching, according to my words, he is a wise man. Then in verse 26, he said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, I will liken unto him as a foolish man. Now that word is still akuo, but it is part akuo, which means to come alongside. It come alongside. Now the tragedy is that they took the time to come and hear the message. They took the time to come and hear the teachings of Christ, but left there with their own agenda. Now would it be foolish for you to come and to receive all of the theological training from all of these fine professors and leave here with your own presuppositions. And Jesus said, he is a foolish man. Well, we look in here at the structure, the structure. They structure their life, they structure their, 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 their ministry, they structure their house according to his teaching according to his word. We must build our houses according to the teachings of Christ. And the teachings of Christ is different from the teachings of the world. The Pharisees had their teaching. The scribes had their understanding of the teaching. The Sanhedrin had their understanding. But Jesus is moving away from Moses and now moving to himself. Remember he said, Moses said unto you, but now I say unto you. He said again, it ha it, you have heard, but now I say. That's a shift away from others' teaching to the teachings of Jesus Christ. And Jesus wants to know who been listening 
to the teaching, who's been listening to the instruction. Your professor will know whether you've been listening or whether you've been hearing what the lecture or the instruction that he has been giving you. And so whosoever hear it, and they structure their house, their foundation, according to his words, gives it stability, gives it strength. It builds on a rock, which means they dug deep. They were not uh, scuba divers, but they were, they were, uh, they were not uh, snugglers, rather, but they were scuba divers. They were not sailboats, but they were submarine. They dug deep into the scripture, into the words of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said he built his house, he built his structure on a rock foundation. The foolish man hears the same teaching, hears the same instruction, but build his house on sand. He did not put much thought into what he was doing. He did not dig deep and you wonder why you got that C. You wonder why you got that D. Maybe because you did not dig as deep as the professor thought you could. And so he said, they build a house on sand, shipped in sand. And the determining factor of whether the houses are built on the right foundation, there's a storm coming. Notice. You have two builders, two foundations, two houses, but one storm. The same storm gonna affect both houses. But how do you determine the wind will blow, the rain will fall, the floods will come, the opposition to ministry will come. The challenges of your theology, your theological thinking, they will come. The rain gonna fall, the, 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 the flood's gonna rise, the wind gonna blow, trouble from everywhere. Trouble from above, trouble from below, trouble all around you. You're gonna have trouble, you're gonna have opposition. But if you have built according to the words of Jesus, you can stand the storm. Listen. The determining factor is the storm. And the house that was built according to the teachings of Jesus withstood the storm. It was able to survive. And we're living in a postmodern world that's dealing with worldview. And they're no longer concerned about biblical views. And will your foundation stand based on the theological training that you have received? And then the other feather who build on sinking sand, the foolish man, the same stone, but great was the fall of his house. It was not able to stand. If your life is not built according to the teachings of Jesus, you will not survive. You will not stand the storm. The storm will destroy your foundation. But if your life is built according to the teachings of Christ, then regardless of the storm, your building will stand. The two ways tells us to examine the cost of profession. Have we paid a price to profess faith in Christ? The two tree tells us of the investigation or whether our lives have really changed or their godly fruit from our lives. And the two houses remind us that the true faith in Christ will last not only in the storm of life, but also in the final judgment. Because we must not be astonished at the sermon of Jesus as the congregation there was. They was amazed as he taught, as one with authority, not as the scribes and the Pharisees. The determining factor, will your house stand the storms of life? Will you survive as you go forth from this place 
into the various places of ministry that God will lead you, will you survive the storm or will you succumb to the storms of life? Thank you so much, Reverend Alexander, for that timely and challenging word. Uh, I couldn't help but notice that you had to get one last dig at them before they leave, though, didn't you? They, uh... That's wonderful. Uh, I would like to ask the gentlemen who are uh, graduating as we are in preparation now for the awarding of our diplomas, would you please place your graduation caps back on? Thank you kindly. And while we are situating ourselves for the next step of our ceremony, if Mr. Hess and Dr. James will join me, I'd like to take just a moment to thank the members of the faculty and the board of BTS. Will you take a quick moment to also thank me, or help me, thank these uh, gentlemen, thank me as well, but I don't do anywhere near as much as they do. Uh, but to thank these gentlemen and the, uh, the women that are also on our faculty and not here tonight for their hard work uh, this, uh, for the seminary and the education. Thank you. I'd also like to uh, make sure to thank uh, Briarwood Presbyterian Church, our originating church of which we are a board-directed ministry for their commitment to Birmingham Theological Seminary, for their leadership, for the mission and the vision that we receive from them and that we put into practice in advanced theological education. This institution would most certainly not exist without the support of the church. Uh, and so we are very grateful for that vision, oversight, leadership, the materials, uh, the, and the passion for the gospel. Uh, Mr. Mark Hess will be awarding, uh, the chairman of the board of Birmingham Theological Seminary, will be awarding the diplomas this evening. Uh, and after receiving their diploma, uh, the master's graduates will be hooded by Dr. James, uh, the vice president of the seminary, and for our single uh, doctoral candidate will be hooded by Dr. Howard Eirich, uh, the director of our biblical counseling program. So, now that's out of the way. Now it's the fun time. So, tonight, as I call your degree program, if you will stand and then come forward when I call your name. First tonight, we would like to recognize our graduates that were unable to attend in absentia, and so it is an honor to award the degree of Master of Arts in Ministry in Christian Education to the Reverend Matthew Lewis Atterbury and the degree of Master of Arts in Religious Education to the Reverend James Benjamin Youngblood, Jr. Please join me in celebrating their accomplishment. Now, students, if you will stand when your degree program is called, and when I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma. Certificate in Apologetics. First, we will honor our graduate in the Certificate of Apologetics program, John Daniel Coleman, who is on his way to receive his diploma. Congratulations on your accomplishment, Mr. Coleman. Next, we would like to honor our graduate in the Certificate in Biblical Counseling, Allison Lee Haynes. Will you please come forward to receive your diploma? Congratulations, Ms. Haynes. What a wonderful accomplishment. Next, we have our candidate in the Master of Arts in Biblical Studies. So, Ms. Ida Hennington, if you will please stand and come forward to receive your degree.
by the power vested in me by the Board of Directors of Birmingham Theological Seminary and upon recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the Master of Arts in Biblical Studies degree. Well done. Well, now the, we would like to honor our graduates in the Master of, Biblical, a Master of Arts in Biblical Counseling program. So if you will please stand, Master of Arts in Biblical Counseling. When I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma. Casey Elizabeth Dover. Well done. Akinma Favor James, please come forward to receive your diploma. Congratulations. Nora Hortensia Torres Martina, Martinez. Well done. By the power vested in me by the Board of Directors of Birmingham Theological Seminary and upon recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you all the Master of Arts in Biblical Counseling degree. Well done. Now we will have our candidate for Master of Arts in Ministry in Pastoral Leadership to stand. Reverend Paul Wiley Sanders, Sr., will you please come forward to receive your diploma, sir? It's hard when he's taller. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> Reverend Sanders, by the power vested in me by the Board of Directors of Birmingham Theological Seminary, and upon recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the Master of Arts in Ministry and Pastoral Leadership degree. Well done. <laughs> Next, we will honor our graduates in the Master of Divinity program. If you gentlemen will please stand. When I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma. Stanley Henderson Bramlett, please come forward. Dr. Eric's already recruiting for the doctoral program. <laughs> Congratulations. 
Next, James Stephen King. Congratulations, Stephen. <laughs> Brian Clark Phillips, if you will come forward to receive your diploma. Congratulations, Brian. <laughs> Gentlemen, by the power vested in me by the Board of Directors of Birmingham Theological Seminary and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the Master of Divinity degree. Well done. <laughs> the final degree we have to award tonight is one of our special ones. We are very excited to honor our graduate and the Doctor of Ministry in Biblical Counseling degree. Please congratulate Mr. Nicholas David Webb as he comes forward to receive his degree. done. <laughs> Nicholas, by the power vested in me by the Board of Directors of Birmingham Theological Seminary and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the Doctor of Ministry in Biblical Counseling degree, Dr. Nicholas Webb. Well done, sir. You may be seated. Gentlemen, thank you for your assistance. And now you're all graduated. Let's give all of them a round of applause. Well done. That's an organist's applause right there. Thank you, Dr. Kaysen. The Lord has given you a tremendous blessing, equipping you with knowledge and with skills to apply that knowledge to the great task of equipping the saints, building up the church, and reaching the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I charge you, as you have already heard from Reverend Alexander, from our scripture reading, and even from our hymns, to remain faithful to the work of the kingdom, using what God has blessed you with, and to continue on your journey of faith in Christ, being a hearer and a doer of the word, and asking that question, what's next? Dr. James will now come and issue a charge to the graduate, after which we will sing and we will hear the benediction from board member uh, and faculty member, Reverend Brandon Bowman. You know, this is a great occasion. It's so wonderful to see you smiling at me instead of getting mad at me. So I, I greatly appreciate that in your journey. Now, some of you, as Dr. Eirich said, you're gonna come back and see us for the doctoral program. Okay, so now my charge to you is coming from Ecclesiastes, Chapter 12, verses 9 through 14. In addition to being a wise man, the preacher also taught the people knowledge. And he pondered, he searched out and arranged many proverbs. The preacher sought to find delightful words and to write words of truth correctly. The words of wise men are like goads, and masters of these collections are well-driven nails. They are given by one shepherd. But beyond this, my son, be warned. The writing of many books is endless, and excessive devotion to books is wearying to the body. The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God 
and keep his commandments because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether is good or evil. Now Solomon the preacher, the wisest man who ever lived, he taught and imparted knowledge to the people. Solomon, as you know, was a prolific writer of wisdom literature. Now as a mature man, as an older man, he's kind of stepped back and he's had time now to reflect. He's had time to meditate, to look back at his life and the experiences, both good and bad. Now the teacher, after prayerful analysis and examination, arrives at a conclusion. He then boldly proclaims and asserts that life under the sun is meaningless, is vanity, is futile, and is chasing after the wind apart from God. So my charge to you, 2021 BTS graduates, are really coming from verses 12 and 13. So Solomon states that the writing of many books is endless and excessive. Devotion to books is wearying to the body. You already know, you can wear yourselves out looking for answers apart from God. Now all the books that you've gone through over all these many years, they weren't in vain. Okay, you, you've learned a lot from them. Also with the various syllabi, all the assignments that you've had, your love and passion for Logos Bible software has left you bewildered and shocked and overwhelmed. You know, there's over 1.7 million books are published every year. And Solomon is saying, don't get caught up in human wisdom, in human achievement, and human effort. These are wise words of divine authority. All of these books, all of the software, all of the studying is to bring about sanctification, spiritual maturity, that we would be morally blameless before God. Not haughty, not proud, and not arrogant. So my charge is one, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and with all your mind. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus in John 21 asked Peter, do you love me? If you love me, then feed and tend my sheep. Regardless of the degree that you have, you are going to feed and tend sheep. And then he said, how do we do this? Well, Peter tells us we do it with gentleness, and with reverence. The second charge is the conclusion of the matter, which is explicit recommendation, is to fear God and keep his command. We live in a world today where God is my buddy, he's my homeboy, he's my good friend. That's not who God is. We know that God is wrathful, God is angry, he will punish sin. But if we are to fear him, to respect him, and to reverence him, and obey his commandments. And then the last, Paul says that you are to be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Blessings to each of you, and looking forward to seeing you again. Receive now the benediction of the Lord God Almighty. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all of God's people said together, Amen. 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 Go in peace.